All right, now we're under the car in the front. This is our right front suspension. We're going to check a few of the uh, wear points, such as ball joints, tie rod ends, sway bar link, our control arm bushing, and so on. First off, let's check the main outer ball joint. All right, now we're going to check this main ball joint in two ways, one in compression, pushing it together, and one in extension, pulling it apart. For the extension, we'll insert a pry bar between the knuckle upper part that is part of the hub that the ball joint pin is going through and the control arm which is the base of the ball joint and we'll simply pry. Now you'll find with these 3 series cars you'll have a small amount of movement. The original ball joints are mounted in rubber and that rubber flexes a little bit but we have no clunking or no, no large amount of movement. The movement we have here is only that rubber. So that's good. Now to check compression, we'll use a large pair of pliers. We'll come around on top of the ball joint, uh, the ball joint spindle, which is that threaded end up here and the bottom. So we're trying to push the spindle into the ball joint itself. And again, as we squeeze the pliers, we only have that small amount of rubber movement. Now, what will usually happen on these is the rubber will deteriorate before the actual ball joint fails. And we'll have far more movement both in compression or the other test with prying it apart. This is what you want to see on a good fresh ball joint barely any movement there. All right, now we'll test our outer tie rod joint. This is a ball joint very similar to this, but just smaller. We'll take, do the same thing, pry it apart, and no movement at all, and we will also work on bringing it com together in compression. And again, absolutely no movement. There's no rubber here, so this should be no movement at all. If you see any movement in either direction on this one, you should plan on replacing the uh, outer joint. If you see more than a sixteenth inch of movement, it should be replaced immediately. Now continuing on the tie rod, we have another joint on the inboard end where it connects to the steering rack. It's a ball and socket joint, but not like this. You have a ball and a socket, and the tie rod floats in that, which allows you to steer and have the rod have different angles. So we want to have no movement on that side. What we'll do is push on the tire at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock and see if we have any movement here we can also look for movement at this joint before we did the pry and the uh, pinch too. This has absolutely no movement. There's no play in the rack and there's no play at the joint here. Now we'll also inspect the boot. We want no cracks on the boot. We want to see no fluid coming from the boot. This boot is in good shape. The rubber's not cracking. There's no holes on it. And if we did find fluid coming from the boot, that would not only mean there's a crack in the boot, it would also mean the output seal on the rack is leaking. This is actually dry in here. So unless we had a leaking seal, a cracked boot would not leak any fluid. We would let dirt in, which can hurt the joint in there. But uh, any fluid means that our rack seal is gone. Now, on this three series car, we have this boomerang shaped control arm. This is unique to the three series cars. This would be from 84 all the way up through 05. Use a similar arm to this. Some are steel, some are aluminum, but they all use that similar style. There's another ball joint here, very similar to the outboard one. This one is not mounted in rubber. We'll check this one the same way as we did the outboard. We'll pinch from below and up onto the cross member above. There's a flange right there we can grab or we can do it in the rear. And we'll get our pry bar between 
and pry apart to see if there's any movement. Any movement there, and we should plan for replacement. Further on down on the control arm, this is our control arm mounting bushing. We want to inspect the rubber for any signs of obvious cracking or coming apart, which would mean the bushing should be replaced. We can also look for extreme looseness by pushing and pulling on the arm. There's no movement here, this one's in good shape. If you, have any, if you can make any movement on that just by pushing and pulling on the arm, that bushing again should be replaced. This is a major cause for front end shake at 40 to 60 miles an hour is this bushing being bad. Now as we've noted, this is a three series control arm. Other models use different shaped control arms. Five, six, and seven series cars use a single control arm with a bush, uh, ball joint on the end and a bushing on the other end, just a straight arm, and use two of them, one going back, one going here. You'll inspect those the same way. Inspect the ball joints and inspect the rubber bushings that would be over at the ends here. Finally, we'll look at the sway bar end link here. This goes all the way up to the shock and mounts to the sway bar down here. This has small ball joints similar to these two. We'll check that the same way. Pry apart, push together. Any movement can cause a clunking and it should be replaced. If it's nice and tight, which this one is, we've already checked it, it's fine to go and uh, we're on to the next point of inspection, which on this car is our headlight aiming link. Just make sure it's in place. This will only be here if you have a model that has the adaptive headlights or self-leveling headlights. We just want to make sure that link's in good shape, road debris hasn't taken it off. If this is broken, our headlights won't aim properly. While we're under here, just take a good inspection on the brake caliper, the hose, running through and up into the body. Make sure you see no brake, fru brake fluid leaks. Make sure the hose has no cracks on it. Any cracks on this hose, it should be replaced immediately. You're talking about losing your brakes. And just look for any signs of grease on the inside of the wheel or brake fluid any place. Now, finally, if this were a four-wheel drive car, we would have an axle going through here in the front. We'd have a boot and another boot on the inboard side. Inspect those boots for cracks. If you have any cracks, evidence of fluid coming out of the boots, grease, you should replace the boots before the axles go bad. We'll show you how to inspect the axles when we do the rear of this car. Now here we are under the middle of the vehicle. We're looking at the back of the transmission, looking forward, and we want to inspect our rubber flex disc. This connects the transmission output flange to the drive shaft and absorbs the vibrations in the drivetrain. We want to look at the rubber flex disc along the face and the outer circumference for evidence of any cracks. If we see any cracks, we're going to want to plan to replace the flex disc. Also look for oil on the flex disc and on the back of the transmission itself. That would be indicative that the output uh, shaft seal or the shifter shaft seal, which is up above, is faulty and leaking fluid. That may get these rubber bushings, mount bushings, soaked with oil. We can also look at the bushings and see if they have cracks or if they look mushroomed and squished on either side. That'll usually happen either from age or being soaked with oil. Look at the bottom of the transmission for evidence of oil, which would be leakage from either the output shaft or the input shaft or the engine uh, leakage from the engine coming back. And we would then research to find out where that oil is coming from. Finally, while we're here, we can't inspect the fuel filter per se, but look at the rubber connections the rubber hose connections, look for any evidence of leakage, cracks in the hose, and look at the filter itself. This one's nice and shiny. It's been replaced recently, and it says 512 on it, which is a good idea. This filter was replaced on the fifth month of 2012, so this filter is still good for a while yet. 
Let's go ahead and look further back on the vehicle to the rear suspension.